AI is helping to streamline work everywhere. And in this video, I wanna show you how you can leverage AI with automation. Let's say for example, you have an output that you wanna repurpose into multiple different pieces of text. For example, you might want an email, you might want a blog, you might want a title, but it's all stemming from the same piece of content. Well, if that sounds familiar to you, you don't wanna miss this video because that is exactly what I'm gonna be breaking down. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, and it's our mission to help you get organized and automated with no-code tools. One of my favorite no-code tools is Make, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can build an awesome automation using Make that's gonna talk to OpenAI, and we're gonna be doing all of this from an interface in Airtable. Now, before we get into the video, I want to encourage you to follow along with me step by step as we're building here. Go ahead and grab your own Make account and open it up and follow along with me. If you don't already have make.com going, if you don't have an account, use our link below that you'll find around this video and you can get set up on a free trial. But without further ado, let's hop into the heart of things. And I want to start off with actually walking through a quick demo of the exact use case that we have for producing content on this very YouTube channel. So first and foremost, what you see here in my interface is a text file. We generate these text files with every video we create. So we put together a piece of content and then we create the text file, which is a breakdown of everything we say in that video. Now this is really, really important because it helps for SEO purposes to have all of this information on hand. And also it allows us to produce all the other components that are gonna be associated with a particular video. So here's that text file. It's just uploaded in this big chunk right here. As you see, there's this one big field inside of our interface. But if I scroll on down, I wanna show you the outputs. And this is where I really wanna draw our attention for today because all of these different outputs can be produced from that text file. If you think about it, when we start with the actual video itself, then the context of that video will lend to the actual video title. The context of that video will lend to the blog page title. It will then lend to the exact blog that we write, which of course is a component of the video that the blog is about. It's also going to dictate the YouTube description and the email blurb. And just in case you're not on our email list, the email blurb is the piece that we send out once a week to our newsletter to tell people about the new pieces of content that we've put together. Of course, we want to write a quick but engaging little summary there that summarizes what that content is about to drive more people to check it out. So all of these different components are being driven by that actual content itself the very video in question. In this case, all produced by the text file of that video. So how can we then automatically generate all this stuff? Well, thanks to OpenAI, we can just push a button inside of our interface. Right here, I've got one simple button push. Ask AI, that's gonna run an automation in the background, which I'm gonna be going into detail on. And over time, as we wait, we're gonna see all of these different components filled out the video title, the blog page title, the blog copy, the YouTube description, and the email blurb all filled out based on that one button push. Now all of this is being run in the background thanks to this automation in make.com. This particular automation where we are pushing a button in Airtable, finding information about that record, and then performing all of those little pieces, all of those different prompts where we're asking ChatGPT to give us that output back. Then we take all of those outputs and we stuff them right back into Airtable. And if we now flip back into our interface, you're gonna see all of that information now filled out. And this is all editable because all of these fields are simple text, either single line or long text fields. So of course it's up to us to edit this information, to read through it and make sure that it meets our standards. But it's a great way to get a very quick head start on all these different components that must be included with any piece of content that we produce. Again, that goes down to the video title, the blog copy, etc. 
So here we can see the actual blog, or at least a rough draft of it, was written for us by OpenAI. The YouTube description was provided, as well as the email blurb right here. And again, all of this fully editable. We can come in and make any changes that we need to to keep things fresh and representative of our brand. So how do we build this automation? Let's flip on into make.com and take this one step at a time. Now the first piece here is that we are watching responses from Airtable. If you haven't used this before, this is just a simple webhook that we're setting up inside of Make. So when you build this scenario, you will just choose Airtable as your trigger and you can go in and choose this option of watching responses and that will produce this webhook for you. Now this little part is a little bit tricky, so let me walk you through how we can set this webhook up so that when we push that button in our interface, it then initiates this automation in Make. We'll flip back into our interface here. The first thing we need to do when editing the interface is to add this button element right here. You can access the button element by accessing the elements in the bottom left corner, go to all elements, and simply find button here. You can go ahead and drag and drop a little button wherever you'd like, and I like to put it up here just at the top. Now, once you're all set with that button, I'm gonna delete this one, you'll go ahead and click into the button, and you have to choose an action. In our case, we want to run an automation. But the key takeaway here is that the automation that you run is actually gonna be an automation in Airtable, not in make.com. So what we have to do is effectively build an automation in Airtable that sends the right information to make. So that way we push the button, it starts an automation in Airtable, which in turn starts an automation in make. This is the best way to integrate with a webhook trigger inside of make that's watching responses. And this particular approach is going to save you on your operations that you burn through in Make, making sure that you only use operations when you want to actually initiate an automation. So let's walk through what that actually looks like inside of our automations. Once we've mapped this button to an automation, we simply build the automation back here. And in this case, I've called it send to AI. Of course, the trigger is when a button is clicked. And for us, all we wanna do is run this automation and we're gonna send this to make.com. So if you have not ever used this little snip of code before, it's a very common piece of code that we use inside of our automations between Airtable and Make. I'll be sure to paste this below wherever you found the video so that you can just copy and paste it. Now the thing is you need to actually update your Make webhook right here. So where this says let URL equal, this particular part is my specific webhook for my specific automation. This needs to be updated with your webhook that you'll get from Make right here in that first step. If you drill in, just say copy this webhook address to your clipboard and you can go ahead and paste it back here in your script. Be sure to then append it with this last part, question record ID equals. And this is because we are actually going to be passing the record ID of the specific record over to Make so that Make can get the context of that record. So over here on the side, what we need to do is add a variable. It's gonna be input variable and make sure that you get this exactly right because it is case specific. And then you'll also need to map it to the record ID of your particular record. Now, once you're all set with this, all this is gonna do, again, it's a really simple script. Button is pushed, Airtable automation is then going to pass the record ID to make. Now, in the next step of our automation, we are going to understand the full context of that record ID. We're going to take the record ID, and in this particular step, we are going to get all of the other information about that record. So, we are saying, take that record ID back into Airtable, whatever your table and database is called, and be sure to look up all of the information about that specific record using the record ID that we got in the previous step. All right, now we know everything about that particular record and we can take that information and pass it along to ChatGPT, give it a little bit of context and say, now that you know this thing about me, give me an output that is the output that I'm looking for. So let's take this one step at a time. But before we get into the actual information that we're passing, in terms of getting the context passed on to ChatGPT, a lot of times we might have 
too much text in our particular field. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna flip us back into Airtable here, and this is the field where we are dropping in that text information. But you can look at this and see that this is quite a lot of text. And so in some cases, we actually want to only pass the majority of this text over to ChatGPT. Very often, if we send too much information to ChatGPT at one time, it can overload the system and it just kind of breaks down. It says, ah, this is too much for me, and it just frazzles out. So in order to avoid that from happening, I found that the right character count for me is generally around 10,000 characters. So I built a pretty simple formula that's gonna look at this text file, and if the duration of the text file is too long, if it has more than 10,000 characters, it's just gonna summarize it. It's gonna grab the first 5,000 characters, and it's gonna grab the last 5,000 characters, and it's gonna throw them together. In this exact example right here, this is more than 10,000 characters. So my formula right here is just the text summary. And what it's doing is it's saying, I'm gonna look at the length of the text file. And if it's greater than 10,000, then all I'm gonna do is take the left 5,000 most characters. I'm gonna put a little couple of carriage returns and some ellipses in here. And then I'm gonna look at the right 5,000 most characters. Now in the case where the original text file is not greater than 10,000 characters, I'm just gonna take the text file. If the text file is small enough, I'm just gonna take it in its entirety. But if it's too big, that's when I don't want to overload the system, so I'm gonna be passing over this. So if we were to look at this output right here, what you'll find when I scroll down is that about halfway through, we have a couple carriage returns, that ellipse, and then the ending of this. So again, all it's doing is it's parsing out the beginning and the end of the overall text file so as to not overburden ChatGPT, and it's only sending 10,000 characters. So that right here, the text summary output, is going to be a saving grace for us because it's going to make sure that we're not sending too much information to ChatGPT at one time. Now let's flip into our automation and take a look step-by-step step at how we can build this. So inside of this, we are connecting with ChatGPT, and the first thing we're doing is talking to the system. And for the system, we're gonna kinda give it the high-level ground rules of what's going on. We're gonna say, you're a YouTube video publishing assistant. You're tasked with creating elements for a piece of video content. Here is the context for that content. And notice that I'm dropping in the text summary inside of single or double quotations. Now on the next piece of information, this is just for context, this first blurb. Then I'm gonna ask the assistant role and say, all right, my output that I'm looking for right now in this example is a blog. I want you to write the blog for me and get specific. Here I want the blog to be between 800 and 1000 words in length, the end. So then as a next step, once you're all set with this, make sure to then go ahead and rename these modules. In our example, you can see that we're asking ChatGPT five different outputs. So you don't wanna get these mixed up when you go to map them back to Airtable. So I strongly recommend that you right click and say rename and then name each one of these modules. Here's where we're writing the blog. But it's gonna be the same every time. When I'm happy with my first blog output, or in this case, my first ChatGPT prompt, I'm just gonna clone it. Right click on it, clone it, and here, the only change I have to make is to come into the message content for the assistant, the actual output that I'm asking for, and here I'm gonna say, well, I don't need a blog again, now I want you to write me the YouTube video title. So go ahead and give that to me, 45 to 60 characters in length, and include one emoji. Cool. Again, copy it, do the next one. Here I want you to write the blog title for me between 55 and 75 characters and consider SEO keywords. You get the idea. I go line by line, prompt by prompt, and I get all of the outputs from ChatGPT that I need. And then as one final step, I'm going to update that record in Airtable. I go in here and I choose to update the record that started this whole automation. And of course, I'm gonna map all these pieces back here. Now it might be a little confusing as to what you need to map to, so let's actually go through one of these as if we were doing it for the first time. Here is the video title. It was the fourth element inside of my process here, the fourth module where I wrote the video title. 
So inside of here, we need to click on choices, then expand message and then bring in content. This will bring in the output from ChatGPT and that will be able to map it directly back to your Airtable database. Once you're all set and you've mapped all the different components that you need, go ahead and click OK. Make sure to save your entire automation. I always forget to do this. And then flip back into Airtable and take it out for a spin. Go ahead and open up your interface. Make sure that you find one with the text file in question and hit that Ask AI. Now this last piece actually brings up an important point. Sometimes someone might accidentally push that button and you might not already have a text file put in here. So how can you make sure that you don't run this whole automation unnecessarily if someone just accidentally pushes the button? Well, I've included a filter right here inside of my automation. We can drill in and see that only if the text file exists am I going to move on to the third module here. So someone can push the button, I'll go find the information about that record in Airtable, but if it doesn't have a text file, that is if the text file does not exist, if there's no text, well then I'm not gonna go talking to ChatGPT and burning through a lot of tokens that I have on the platform. I know we went pretty fast in this video, but there's a lot to cover in terms of integrating AI with Make, and Airtable. So if you have any questions that we didn't quite cover, please be sure to drop them below wherever you found the video. And in the meantime, keep on building.